This video will prepare you for a histology slide practical. You will be able to identify these epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissues, as well as be able to describe their function and give one location where they are found. Okay, so all of these things here are going to be included. They are not going to be in this order though. Okay, this very first slide is epithelial transitional. And let me, this is transitional. Now, if you look right here, you're always going to be looking at the open space and then the first set of cells. Those are gonna be the cells that you're being asked to identify. And you can tell that these cells don't really have any exact, like they're just a bunch of different shapes. They're not really circular. They're not cuboidal. So you're going to see that they sort of are like in between, like a transition. You'll also see these umbrella type cells along the top. And that's what this is. This is a transitional giveaway you definitely know that these are transitional cells. Now, these cells are usually found in the bladder and they allow for storage and expansion of the bladder. So transitional in general, that, tip, that tissue is going to allow for stretch and storage. Now, I just wanted to show you this because if you don't know, this is the exact same tissue so if you ever get a slide and you see something like this, you just need to use your fine focus knob, which is probably the only thing you'll be allowed to touch during the practical anyways, so you can adjust it and then you can see it this way. Big difference, right? So if you can't see and you're like, oh, what is this? Use your fine focus. Okay, so this is cartilage. And this is a specific type of cartilage called elastic cartilage. And you can tell, you can see the chondrocytes here. And these, elastic cartilages, they allow for tissues to return to their normal shape. So instead of just pressing on, you know, your skin or something and then it just staying that way, you have elastic cartilage. Another place that this is found is the epiglottis. This is also a cartilage. It's called hyaline cartilage and it is used to cushion, support, and reinforce other tissues and organs. And it's found actually, it's the most common cartilage found throughout the body. It's also the weakest cartilage in the body. And I really like this because you can easily see the chondrocytes and they actually excrete this matrix that they're in and then they get stuck in the matrix. And so this is just a really cool picture. It also has like this glassy appearance. Um, and this is found in the embryonic skeleton actually. Okay, and then right here what we have is a pseudostratified. So we haven't talked about that yet, but let's go ahead and talk about what is stratified. So you have two different func like two different types, let's call them. So you can have either simple or stratified. And stratified just means more than one, more than one layer. Simple just means just one layer. So if you see something that is just one layer of cells, you'll call it simple, such and such. And if you have more than one layer, it's called stratified, such and such. And you'll see what I mean as we go along. Then you have something that's called pseudo stratified. Pseudo just means false and stratified means more than one. So what we have here are some columnar cells. Let me go back so I can zoom in. And so columnar are generally rectangular shaped. And, but here they're all like squished together. They're not actually more than one. And see, you can tell here, here's the basement membrane. Remember we're looking from the white area straight onto the very first thing we see. And we see just sort of like this blob. One giveaway that this is not multiple layers of cells, that it's not actually stratified, 
is that it's all sort of like one layer. And then you can see, let me zoom in, these little tiny hair-like projections, these are cilia. And they're really helpful for propelling things along, right? So a place that you're going to find pseudostratified ciliated columnar is going to be in the respiratory tract where these cells are responsible for secretion and propulsion. And the propulsion is moving, so if you think about it, it's like mucus, right? If they're secreted and sort of pushed away. One thing that you will often see inside or embedded like next to or within, um, these cells are called goblet cells and they actually produce mucus and then these cilia would kind of like move the mucus along. And so you'll see here that these are not, it's like you can see the little nuclei, they look like there's more than one layer. There actually isn't, they're just really squished in together. And because they're so tightly squished in, it looks like there's more than one layer, but you can see that it's not. It's really just one cell, one really long squished cell. Well, not just one, but there's like a bunch of them, right, next to each other. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, so here again we have another stratified, meaning more than one layer of, these are squamous cells, and these are going to be really important for protecting against abrasions. And these stratified squamous cells are found in your skin because your skin are really going to need, you know, protection from abrasions. So stratified squamous protect from abrasions and found in skin. Okay, now these guys, remember we were talking about columnar cells. They are rectangular. Remember we're looking from the white space straight on to what we're looking at here. And you can see that this is not ciliated like the ones that we had before. These are just, I'm gonna move it some. You can see it really good here. They're just long rectangular cells, one layer. So we have just a single layer of columnar epithelia. These simple columnar epithelia, so we can just put simple epithelial columnar, they are found a lot in the digestive tract and they are responsible for absorption and secretion. Another guy that is also really big for absorption and secretion, you can see we have a pointer here pointing directly to this little cell. Well, you can tell even really better right here that we're looking at simple cuboidal so it's just one layer how can you tell it's one layer of course there's a lot of layers right there's so much going on within a tissue that's why you will look at this empty space and particularly if there's a pointer if your ta is nice they will have it pointing directly to a cell so these are simple one layer of columnar cells you're going to find these in all of your ducts and glands and um, they are functioning as absorption and secretion cells. Okay, now here we have another pointer and he's pointing right to, I've circled it, this little teeny flat looks like it's just really squished, you can't even really see the cell, you just sort of see the nucleus. This is a simple squamous epithelia. Simple squamous. So he's like squashed. A little simple squamous epithelia. And simple squamous, they are, because they're so small, they're really helpful in facilitating uh, filtration and diffusion throughout the cell. So think about where you would need filtration and diffusion, the air sacs of the lungs, right? Diffusing that oxygen. Okay. And then here, this is a smear of blood and it's actually, blood is considered a connective tissue because it's connecting all throughout the body. And here we have three different things in the blood. We have these right here, and these are going to be erythrocytes. They make up most of this, and the erythrocytes are more commonly known as red blood cells, and their function is to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide, you know, from the lungs to the organs and out of the body, all that good stuff, right? And so then we also have erythrocytes, which are better known as white blood cells, and they have a very important role in immunity. 
And then here, if we look even closer, let me zoom in, these are thrombocytes. These guys. And they actually aid in clotting. And if you need to know the spelling of any of this, feel free to look back at the very beginning of the video. I just want to try to keep it as short as possible. Oh, and they're found, of course, uh, blood is found in the veins and the arteries. All that good stuff. Okay, here we have some connective tissue, and what we're looking at is a, a dense, right? So a lot, a very compact, dense, irregular. So they're kind of like wavy. It's not in like parallel sheets. We actually have this wavy appearance. So this is dense, irregular connective tissue, and this is found in the fascia and other places, but we're just gonna stick with one thing so you can really focus on it for your test. It's found in the fascia and it resists uh, pulling force. It resists force from many different directions. That word many is going to be our big difference between dense irregular connective tissue and dense regular connective tissue. This is a compact bone specimen and you can tell right away you can see it, it sort of looks like if you were to cut a tree in half or a section of a tree it's very beautiful so this is bone and of course it's found in the skeleton and it enables us to store calcium and phosphorus among other things here we have a type of connective tissue that is a cartilage connective tissue and this is fibrocartilage and fibrocartilage is known for its ability its function is to resist compressive force within the body so it's going to be found in the pubic symphysis along with other areas in the body that need to be able to resist compressive force and you will see that it's kind of wispy now a very big point, the reason I include this slide, I'm going to include another slide at the end um, that is also actually fibrocartilage because I don't want you to memorize the color. The color is not what you're actually looking at. The color is just whatever they use to stain it with. It could be any color. So I really want you to pay attention to the fact that these have the contracites. You can sort of see this wispy appearance. Okay, then we have adipose tissue, and these are adipocytes, and they are empty fat cells. The fat is not actually in there. If it was in there, it would be yellow, and so the fat has evaporated, um, but this is adipocyte, or adipose cells, and it, adipose tissue functions to support and insulate the organs of the body and it's found in the subcutaneous layer of the skin and it's also found surrounding organs. And then here we have reticular connective tissue. Reticular connective tissue is, it functions to support tissues and immune cells. So if you look here, we have, they sort of look like grapes. So you have like the vines and then you have these little tiny grape buds. This is specific to reticular tissue and you can really see it up close. This is reticular. So again, don't pay attention to the color, pay attention to the fact that there's these little, little grapes coming off of these vines. That's the reticular tissue. And this you're gonna find in the lymph nodes, which are sort of also like these little tiny balls for lack of a better word. So reticular tissue found in the lymph nodes helps to support the tissues and immune cells. Okay. And then here we have another type of cartilage connective tissue. And this is our dense regular connective tissue. It's also sometimes called dense white fibrous connective tissue. Don't let that throw you off. Dense connective tissue, same thing. Okay, and here you're gonna notice that this is more, as opposed to our irregular dense connective tissue, this one is just like parallel. It's dense and it's regular. It's not like wavy, like our dense irregular was. And the dense regular is going to be able to withstand uh, a pulling force or pulling stress 
in one direction. So remember our dense irregular was able to withstand this pulling force in many directions, but this is able to withstand it in only one direction. And this is found connecting muscle to bone, like in tendons. It's also found connecting bone to bone, such as ligaments. Okay. Now this is a type of connective tissue that is called a loose connective tissue. So what we've looked at so far is mostly dense connective tissue, with the exception of like adipose and reticular. Those were both loose connective tissues. This is a loose areolar connective tissue and it functions to support organs and one of the giveaways that looks like this and like all of them is these darker black like fibers you'll see that in the areolar connective tissue and it's found like i said it supports and cushions your organs and so it's going to be found surrounding your organs now this is a nerve tissue slide and this right here is actually a neuron and these little cells are glial cells and so if you look these these nerve cells which don't exactly look like textbook drawings are they function to send electrical impulses throughout the body right and they're found in the brain and the spinal cord and the nerves obviously and these little glial cells, they support your neurons. They support and nourish your neurons. Okay, and now we're into muscle tissue. So this is smooth muscle tissue. And a big tell for this being smooth muscle tissue is that it has this spindly, also starts with an S, appearance. It looks like a spindle and you'll start to see that more the more that you look at it and as we compare it to other tissues. It also has no striations and we're going to look and see what that means in just a second. So smooth muscle tissue and this is smooth muscle tissue is involuntary. It's something that your body just you know you don't have to think about it for it to work. It just works on its own. And smooth muscle tissue is found in the digestive system. That's one place. And it can provide force and it can also accommodate stretching. So that's its function. It can provide force or accommodate stretching. And those are two things that you're gonna need in your digestive system, right? A bit of force and some digestive stretching. All right, here's another muscle tissue that we have. This is skeletal muscle. And this has the striations they're like these long, you see those striations? It also has these nuclei on the periphery. So skeletal muscle has peripheral nuclei as well as these striations. So that remember up here in our smooth muscle, see, no striations, which is why they call it smooth. And our skeletal muscle is the only voluntary muscle in our body. And this is what allows us to have voluntary movement of our skeleton. And it is found connected to bone, which allows us to move it. So when you work out, this is the muscle that is actually sore. And here is another type of muscle tissue. And this is cardiac muscle. And the way that you can tell that it's cardiac is the presence of these. These are intercalated discs. And they are these lines that run throughout the entire, oops, the entire thing. You can really see them now that you're looking for them. But these intercalated discs, um, they allow your, they act like as staples. And so they're going to allow this cardiac muscle, which is only found in the heart wall, that's the location. So cardiac muscle is found in the heart wall. And this allows your heart to be in unison, which is very important. Otherwise, you would be having a heart attack. Okay, and this, remember I said we would come back to it. This is also fibrocartilage. So I'm gonna go back and show you the other fibrocartilage. Now you can sort of see the fibroblast in here. Whoops. But you can hardly see them. The chondrocytes and the lacuna, they're, let me get my pointer. You see like right here and right here. 
and right here, and right here, and right here, but it still has this kind of wispy appearance. Um, and so that's why I said don't memorize the color, memorize the features, know the features. So again, let's zoom in, and you're gonna have to zoom in. You'll see these little teeny fibroblast throughout and so you know that it's cartilage you also notice an absence of the presence of a nuclei which is another really big hint that you're looking at cartilage so let's go back and whoops and look at this is the same thing fiber cartilage and you're like what how is that the same thing that's why I said you need to look for things that are tells things that differentiate the slide from anything else. Now, these are actual pictures of what I saw under the microscope. I actually took these pictures with my cell phone. <clears throat> and so these are actually like what the slides will look like. They are not off of Google. They're from my lab microscope pictures. Okay. And so you can see them also under here. And remember fiber cartilage, it's uh, purpose, its function, is to resist compressive force, and you're going to find that in the pubic synthesis. Okay, best of luck.